What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up a Captain America fly and this is going to be a balanced uh, style, a balanced leech. Um, there's a few other names for this, uh, Midnight uh, Fly, uh, I, I can't remember, there's a few different variations. I always knew it as the Captain America. We're using an A-Rex uh, FW550 Semperfly um, wax thread in a 8 aught in red. That is very critical because that's going to be our hot spot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my thread and lay down a nice little layer on the shank of the hook here, working my way back, and then I'll advance my thread back up. To make a balanced fly, you can think of it in two different ways, air balanced, water balanced. Um, they're going to be different because if it balances in the air, it's going to balance different in the water. However, I, I don't really care because they catch fish if you're in a good range of somewhat horizontal. And so let's see how we balance this. This is mine. I've got an embroidery pin right here. It's an inch and a quarter, I believe. And then I've got a 530 seconds um, tungsten bead on there in gold. I only had some gritty gold, but what I do is you can see right now I've got about three bead spacings before I get to that bend of the hook. Now I, I put my bead on opposite. It's just a habit of mine. I think it looks cleaner. And so what I want in order to get a balance for water balance, I want about two beads between where it sits on the end and where it um, hits that uh, hook bend. And that's just a rough estimate. I always encourage people to, you know, tie one, water balance it, see where it sits, and then tie the rest of them that way as long as you're, you know, you're grabbing out of the same pack. However, um, I've done enough of these. I'm just going to go with it. And we're just going to tie that in now with some securing wraps. I'm going to make sure I've got about two beads. You know, I only have one on there physically, but you also got to be mindful back there where we snipped it. You can, you know, get your thread caught on there and it will break it automatically. But um, back to the beads, you can imagine if I had two beads on there, it would be almost tight. But I only have the one, of course. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, you know, about approximately how it's going to be. We'll see if it works because this bead likes to slide around. But when it's on just a loose material and I've got tippet, I'm just going to use some wire here. Insert the wire through here. The wire will allow it to just move freely. And um, you want it to sit about a 30 degree when it's air balanced. So you can see there, if it was air balanced, it would be staying like that. But you can see how it, it moves. The hook um, bend is a little bit heavier than that tungsten bead and it slides it down. And so this isn't going to be as effective. If you really wanted to test it, you could do some thread wraps behind that tungsten bead. But we're, I, I want it to sit about a 30 degree angle and so we'll just go with that. So I know right now it's not air balanced. If anything, it's more towards water balance. So I, I'd fish it like this. So now we're going to start our thread back on here. And um, like I said before, air balanced, water balanced, it doesn't matter. They both catch fish. Um, however, I like to get mine as close as possible to water balance just because in wind and other variables, that's you know going to be more true. I'm using some uh, some super glue here, some Z um, some Z mint, and this is the critical foundation that keeps that uh, embroidery pin all in you know strength and durability. I'm going to be pulling this through rocks and bouncing off a lot of fish in their mouth and jaws. And so we're going to keep that uh, Z cement handy and here be very careful of that uh, point we cut because unless you filed it down, it, it will break your thread. Even if you're using, I've had nano silk um, break as well. It's a pretty sharp point and so I just cover that up a little bit. You can also cover it up with the marabou. Speaking of marabou, this is some black superboo from Whiting Farms. I really like this patch. It um, it's a little bit sparse. You can see right there. It uh, a little bit fiber-esque here towards the tip. I'm going to trim out the stem, and I'm going to use this as my base layer. So this is going to be the ultra flowy part. So this is you know a balance leech rides hook point up. So this is going to be on the top of my tail, and so I'm going to do it a little bit longer. I'm not going to do it quite one times, like maybe one and a quarter times the overall length, and I'm just going to. Check that out, it looks good to me. Trim it out. And you can be mindful of your underbody. However, I'm gonna show you a little trick around it so you can just bust these out real quick. And you can see how I tied down that slope. So that's gonna keep that tail kind of pointing more up as you're fishing it, in, in theory. Now here I've got kind of a bulkier piece. I'm gonna trim out quite a bit of that and you can see we got a lot of fluff and bulk here we're gonna be adding. And that's gonna be the foundation of our tail, the underneath side, and I'll go ahead and tie it up. 
and you know you can be careful once again of the underbody however I'll teach you a trick here so we got a consistent underbody uh, it has to do with how we wrap our chenille and so I'm just going to clean that up a little bit make sure I've got this right on you know in a grouping do a really nice tight thread wraps here at this point and we're going to add some red um, crystal flash um, it seems to be that the crystal flash is my go-to in the red with this particular pattern I don't know what it is but I've been out numerous times where I, I haven't been catching fish and this seems to work. A little trick, I got a new pack here, I just kind of cut the end rather than pull the whole thing out a million times I'll just kind of get out the two strands I need and this way when you cut them out you're not going to be having them splay everywhere and have to shove it back in your bag and it's organized and good to go and so I'll just tie these in on my side making sure they're a little bit longer than my marabou. Um, I often get two bugs out of you know one set of these crystal flash uh, you could maybe even be a little bit more and get three if you really wanted and then I'll just make sure they're lined up on each side and do some nice securing wraps and uh, clean that up and then the way I always trim it is I pull it so that the marabou mostly falls out and then I snip it just a little bit longer than my marabou that way I can be consistent on all my flies and know that uh, it works so next step is we're going to be tying in some 0.2 millimeter wire um, this is in gold I already uh, use this to balance the uh, the fly the air balance that kind of failed but uh, you know let us know that, know that it wasn't air balanced and then I'll tie that in all along the shank of this hook right there into the bend and that will be what's going to secure it and make it a durable fly the next is we're using some of this uh, Whiting Farms bugger pack this is grizzly I tie this pattern in black or grizzly on the hackle it seems like um, you need both but uh, if you only were going to buy one pack I'd definitely go with the Grizzly I have a lot of confidence in this and we're looking towards the back here for some longer fibers this is a size um, 6 jig and so I want to make sure that I'm getting some nice webbiness out of this I don't really necessarily want all these stiff fibers near the tip I want to get some of that you know stiffness but borderline schloppen um, effect here and that's what you know those back feathers kind of get a little bit more webby a little bit more soft and I'll just tie that in by the tip here at the rear and uh, secure that down and then the last material we're going to be tying in is our of course chenille and this is the midnight um, color chenille and I think that uh, it's just one of those materials that I just really love and I think that's why there's some of these patterns some guys call it the midnight something I've I just have always known it as the Captain America a local guy requested it and that's what he called it and that's what I've always called it and we'll continue to call it but um, I'll just prep that by stripping off the chenille and here we are going to make this a nice uniform body and uh, you, we have a little bit of hump there right by the, the bend and I'll show you how to get rid of that it all has to do with wrapping the chenille but first we already laid down one little bit of uh, super glue on this I'm going to lay down a second layer right now and that's just going to make this thing bomb proof bulletproof um, durable and uh, last many 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 fish so first we're going to start by wrapping our chenille and I'm going to do it with touching wraps so I'm not really getting them close to each other I'm just covering the shank so we're kinda of going a little bit sparse here if that's you know if you want to look at it that way and then as soon as I get to this bend here I'm going to wrap it back in and do almost overlapping wraps you may call it touching wraps but they're almost overlapping and you can see how we kind of built up a little bit more of uh, bulk right there by doing that and our underbody now is nice and uniform and so we'll take our, our, white, our bugger and you can see how there's a natural curvature I want that curve going towards the tail of this fly and so I'll just orient this uh, this feather so that they're going back you can prep it by folding these fibers back I'm just going to do what I call the the lazy layback method and as I'm wrapping it back and over I'm holding the feather at an angle so that the fibers are wrapping on the back of the stem and then as you pull tight it kind of sucks them to go straight up and down and then be a little careful here around this uh, this um, the eye of the hook you want about one or two wraps between there and the, the tungsten bead and then I always like to do a full turn to two turns right there on the bead and then I'm just really going to crank down as I'm pulling this to suck it in between the bead and the um, the thread and or the chenille and oh, you got to be careful if you're pulling that tight I maybe want to lay off the Wheaties but that's why I always pinch my 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 
feather with my left hand so that I didn't lose it. I didn't have to rehackle it. And you can see we, that turned out really nice. I didn't get that second wrap up there for a nice collar. But here is the ultimate thing you want to do. You want to make sure you counter wrap this. We wrap the hackle from me to the opposing side like I'm doing now. That's incorrect. I want to back it up and I want to come up and over and zigzag it so that it's crossing over the hackle. That way when uh, you, know, you get that, that 36 inch uh, rainbow trout on this fly and it bites that you know, body before you are able to set the hook and then it's gnawing on it the whole fight in, this hackle is not going to go anywhere. You know, that wire is going to make it durable. So even if it does break, it's just going to fray a little bit and you'll still be able to fish it, you know, probably until I back cast into a, a tree or a shrub or a rock. That's typically how I lose most of my flies. And um, so as you get around that uh, hook guy, just get a wrap right in front of it and then zigzag up and through. And then the trick with my wire wraps, unless I need to be very particular on um, you know, bulk. I always do two full wraps here at the head and cover one almost entirely with thread. That way it doesn't come undone. And I'll use some flush cutters, get that nice and tight. And here's the trick I love with my Captain Americas. I do a double collar. Like I, this is probably twice as wide as I would normally do. I really want that red hot spot collar. And that seems to be something that has been uh, effective on a few of these balanced uh, flies that I tie in these uh, buggers or leeches and we'll just do a single turn whip finish so make sure you're using red thread you could use a red sharpie but for this I really really like to use you know red thread um, that's already pre-dyed and then I will just give this a little coating here with some nice uh, UV resin um, this is a thin uh, bone dry by Solarez so it soaks in and then we'll go ahead and give it a nice cure. You could use head cement or there's a bunch of other products out there. And we'll give that a cure for about 10 to 15 seconds. Just make sure you don't look into this light. It does cause um, eye damage from what people tell me. And uh, now's the real test. Let's, uh, let's check this out and let's brush it out. I got a few trap fibers. If I'm brushing this and the hackle breaks or it comes undone, then I wouldn't even think about fishing it. So this is kind of my test to make sure it's durable. It gets all those trapped hackle fibers out and allows me to brush this, uh, you know, make it look pretty for the gram um, so that people think I tie decent flies, but really it's just durable. So um, there we go. That is the Captain America Balance Leech. Um, it's got a really hot collar on it. Um, but let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's see how it looks when we balance it now that everything's secure. Um, where I want this is about a 30 degree angle with the um, tungsten bead going up, of course. And so we've got our loose wire right there. That's pretty good. That's probably a 37 and a half degree angle. Um, maybe actually 40. But um, let's not test it in the air. Let's go ahead and grab a, a water glass and let's see how it looks when it is dunked in the water. And so I'm just going to plunge it down in, give it a few jigs, and then up and down. and there we go. You can see it wasn't air balanced, but in the water, under perfect conditions with no wind and perfectly filtered water, it sits balanced. It takes a little second for that the marabou to get down, but when it does, and so then as it your indicator bobbles up and down, it gives a really good presentation, and I have confidence in it. So tie some up, fish them. It catches fish when everything else doesn't work. So I hope it works for you too. Mm -hmm.